so you should be looking at the, the forum post for uh, today's meeting. Um, this is, like I mentioned, a new uh, uh, open meeting uh, that we'll be hosting regularly. Uh, this meeting will be every other uh, Thursday, so it's currently every other week. And the goal of this meeting is to provide um, uh, open search dashboards developers and dashboard plugin developers um, an opportunity to get together uh, to review designs and to uh, review work in progress, ask questions, uh, figure out some best practices for uh, how to develop um, against open search dashboards. Uh, so before we get started, uh, some, some basic housekeeping. Um, by joining this meeting, uh, you grant open search and our affiliates the right to record, film, photograph, and capture your voice and image during the open search commu community meeting. So basically, uh, we're going to be recording this. We'll be putting it on our YouTube channel. And you grant us the irrevocable, non-exclusive, perpetual, worldwide, royalty-free right and license to use, reproduce, modify, distribute, and translate for any purpose, all or any part of the recording in and materials. So uh, like, I, like I mentioned, we may... Uh, uh, not only will we may, but we will put the recording of uh, this meeting and future uh, meetings on the YouTube channel so that other developers who can't attend or the timing doesn't work for can, can benefit from uh, what we talk about. Um, we uh, will also um, try to keep the, the meeting uh, efficient and on topic, which means if there are uh, people that are being disruptive or not adhering to our community guidelines, uh, they will be muted and or removed from the meeting. Um, okay, so with that out of the way, um, uh, I think most of you on the call know me, but for anyone uh, who's watching this later, uh, my name is Josh Romero. I'm a front-end engineer at Amazon, and I am, uh, more importantly, one of the uh, maintainers for open search dashboards. Uh, I'm Joshua with four R's on GitHub and uh, other places you may find me. Um, and I will generally be hosting these, these office hour meetings, uh, but we will uh, regularly have a lot of other maintainers and open search dashboards developers in here as well. So uh, today, before we get started, um, normally uh, the way that this will work is that we have um, sign-up slots available uh, for each um, meeting. Uh, the way to sign up for these is to just leave a comment in the uh, forum um that you're of what topic you're interested in talking about with links to the github issues or prs uh so if you're not ready to have questions today but you want to join us in a future um you can uh check out the uh forum posts on the community um you can see that there are uh posts for the upcoming iterations of this meeting as well so if you want to join us on one of those dates um and and talk about a certain topic uh, you can just go to those particular forum posts and sign up. Uh, we, one of the other things that we also be doing at these meetings is uh, when there are no community signups or no community topics, um, we'll be doing rotating uh, presentations from uh, the open search dashboard maintainers and developers on uh, you know tips and tricks that we've learned or uh, you know, new functionality that we think is really useful. Um, so we'll be also sharing those uh, with you today. So today's presentation is going to be uh, by Abby Hu, and she is going to talk about state management in uh, open search dashboards and what we learned in incorporating a lot of state management technologies into a new plugin. Hi, everyone. So I'm Abby. I'm also a maintainer for open search dashboard repository. And today I'm going to demo um, on the topic of data persistence. And since I implement the data persistence feature for this builder, and this builder is um, basically a plugin that we implement to <clears throat> give the user <clears throat> the ability to create different visualization using different list types. And so we implement two types of persistence for this builder. Um, the first type is to save the data or any other configuration or settings that user added to this page before they save before they actually save this. And we wish to persist those data so these will not be lost um, if the user refresh the page. 
And we call this type of persistence um, the app persistence. And um, the app persistence will include basically everything on this page, like the aggregation data, any settings, and also <clears throat> any query or any filters. And let me add a filter here. And so now if I refresh this page, um, you can see all those data will still be saved. So user will uh, can continue editing. And then the second type for persistence, we call it the global persistence. And this mostly include this time filter and also the global filter. And um, so these data will be persisted when user navigate to like a different page in dashboard and they still wish to see the same time filter and global filter applied. Um, for example, if I make this filter a global filter and I change this time <clears throat> to uh, last 30 days and change this to 24 hours, and now if I navigate to like the discover page, uh, we can see the same global filter and the time filter are still being persisted here. So um, the user, they do not have to like reselect and re-adding those same filters. And <clears throat> on top of those persistence, we also implement um, another persistence feature for this builder. It's called the aggregation data persistence. And this is a useful feature when um, user wants to experiment with different this types and they want to see which um, this type best fit their use case for the data they selected. So if I add some aggregations here and I wanna um, see if a line chart uh, with the data, um, uh, we can see those data are still being persisted. And so it will just save time for users. Um, so they don't have to re-add all those aggregations. Yeah. Um, I think, oh yeah, other than that, there are two readme's that I wrote on this topic. And it, it just highlights some concepts and logics that the current implementation for data persistence and it also provides some guide if like in the future another plugin wants to incorporate this functionality as well and yeah i think that's my demo awesome uh thanks abby i have a couple of uh follow-up questions for you um so one is uh you you demonstrated kind of uh this this app persistence and we can see in the um uh the readme here that um a lot of it is going in the url but can you talk a little bit about under the hood once you have followed these these guides to add uh global data pers persistence to your plugin where is that where and how does that data actually get stored uh is it in the url is it in local storage how does that kind of actually get persisted between different plugins and different apps mm, yeah i think um so for the global data persistence, we basically utilize a lot of the helper functions from like a plugin called the Open Search Dashboard Utils plugin. And in this plugin, they um, introduce some utilities. So the most the two most important ones is the data contain or the state container and the state storage. So basically, when we make some change, it will save those data to the uh, URL state storage. And then the, the state storage will be in sync with the state container. And then the state container will be in sync with uh, like with the state manager for like the query or the filter. Yeah, and the, the query and filter bars that you're showing here are also um, a functionality that plugin authors can incorporate in their, their plugins. So. I, I believe those all get 
uh, reference from the data plugin. Is that yes. correct? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I think one of the key points here is that um, in this case, VizBuilder is a, is a plugin that is uh, part of the core library, um, but this type of deep uh, deep interconnection with the other um, plugins you list in your README in terms of being able to share these global controls and then persist that between applications is, is actually available for any plugin to use, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's nothing special that we needed to do to, to kind of integrate with uh, discover or visualize. Yeah, and basically they can just follow those three steps to add this to your plugin. And actually the third step is also optional because for this builder, we, does, we actually did something different. We use Redux store um, instead of the state container. So if other plugins, they have their own management, they can also hook up their management structure with um, the state storage directly. Yeah, I think that that's a great point is that there's there's a lot of flexibility in this system because um, not only like there are state containers if you're if you just just need uh, basic state management for your app right you don't actually need to bring your own state management library uh, you can you can likely get pretty far with the existing state containers uh, but alternatively if you if you already kind of have uh, a state management architecture for your app in mind um like let's say you want to use redux like we did in this case you can still uh sync and integrate with these other utilities so i think that's a nice bit of flexibility that you're not really um you're not really forced to, to use these uh or to use the state containers but you can still kind of get all the benefits um by integrating through these utilities i i know the other the other question i have is um uh, i think useful for uh, plugin authors who are um, starting to dig into these kind of uh, these these more complex utilities and and more complex integrations. Uh, Abby, how did you go about kind of figuring out how all this stuff works? I mean, now it's easier because uh, we have these readmes here. But um, can you talk a little bit about your process for kind of how you learned uh, about all this stuff that I don't think was terribly well documented before when you started? Mm, yeah, there are, I think there are a couple readmes in the open search dashboard utils plugin where it introduced the concept for state storage and the state container. But I think for me, I basically just set a bunch of breakpoints and um, yeah, a lot of breakpoints and then just go into the browser and then just see which functions get called and like what's the overall logic. The workflow looks like, and I think I document those here in those diagrams on how they are being initialized, and <clears throat> if user refresh the page or they made some, but they made some change to the page, like which functions are getting caught. Yeah, and now that now that we have this, I think it's also a great we have a great framework to, you know, potentially. Uh, improve or enhance or even just simplify the system in the future to, to make it even easier for, for integrators. Um, I think there's kind of a lot of, right now, even with the, the new docs, there's there's probably a lot of kind of uh, complexity to manage, <laughs> even under like having to really think through your design, like what, um, what stuff belongs in the global versus application state versus, you know, local state. So, um, yeah, hopefully this this presentation gets people gets people start thinking about like uh, other ways that they can kind of make more uh, cohesive experience uh, as as users navigate between their plugin and other plugins. So, uh, thank you so much, Abby, for for sharing with us today. Is there are there any other uh, questions for Abby from the from the audience? All right. So, Saraz asks, uh, is the time filter state uh, persistence optional? Um, users may want a separate timeline for different visualizations and, you know, might be inconvenient uh, for them if, uh, you know, they, they set it in one place and they, they just want it for that view. Mm, yeah, I think currently it's not optional. So right now, if we set a time filter on, um, like, on Visualize, it will just be sync to like the discover page and the dashboard page. So I guess if they want a different time filter, they have to reset that. 
Yeah, and that's also part of that is based on the way those other plugins are are dealing with the persistence too, right? Is is that right, Abby? Because you could also have a plugin that like has the time range picker, but is not actually it's purposely ignoring uh, global state updates to that from other plugins. Oh yeah, yeah, they they have that option. Like if they don't implement the state, they can have their separate time filter. Like this builder, I think before is not, um, when, before we hook up those persistent global persistence features, it it will just um have its own time filter and global filter. Yeah, and there there is also um, I think I think the the question you raised, Raz, is is a really important one that um there are a couple of good uh, GitHub issues. I will I will link in the follow up. Um, Fundamentally, one of the, the questions I think is uh, from a UX perspective, one of the powerful kind of assumptions in, in the architecture of dashboards is that um, that you that most use cases, users want that time range to persist. So uh, you want to maybe be looking at a search view on Discover, uh, you narrow down to the time range you're interested in, and you want that to carry over to any visualizations you look at, similar to any dashboards you look at. Um, the problem is there are certainly some use cases where you actually uh, want something else. You want maybe a visualization that is pinned to a longer time range, right? Like I, I mostly, if I have my dashboard, it might be a monthly dashboard, but I want some visualizations that are span the full year. Um, so I think that's kind of a, a, a the challenge is how do we make sure that we communicate to a user uh, let, on a dashboard, let's say, if some visualizations respect the global time range filter and others don't, how do we make it clear to users uh, which which will be affected by that that control? Um, and I think that you have the same kind of challenge when moving between apps is um, what is the user expectation? Can you make it clear about? Um, yeah, oh, nice job, Abby. Uh, you found that while I was talking. Um, yeah, so this is a really awesome issue. Uh, I, I guess Rocky posted it. So yeah, thanks. Good job, team. <laughs> Um, this is a really uh, useful issue to discuss kind of like some of the challenges there. I will say, however, that there are a couple of visualizations today that allow you to do this. So um, the TSVB visualization type um, allows you to actually uh, um, can a, uh, you, you can actually override the global gate filter. Uh, you can also, in the TSVB visualization, you can do what's called a date range offset, where if you want to display a, a separate line series from, let's say, the previous time periods data, you can just offset it by a week or a month or whatever time range you're looking at. Um, that type of offset functionality is also available in the timeline visualization and is something that uh, is, is, is possible to do manually in a, a Vega visualization as well. So um, today there are ways to have kind of mixed time range uh, data or visualizations, um, but they're not uh, particularly uh, intuitive or easy. And so this uh, issue is looking for ways to kind of improve that and, and make, it, make it kind of easier and more clear um, what date range uh, you're actually using. Okay, I think we that was the end of the presentation we had prepared today. Um, were there any other uh, ad hoc questions uh, that anyone had? Any uh, uh, challenges on uh, PRs or issues or uh, just plugin development that, that folks wanted to talk about? All right, uh, going, going once, going twice. I think, I think that's probably it for today. Um, so we'll probably wrap this, uh, this initial session early. Uh, again, uh, the assuming I did all the uh, things correctly in Zoom, uh, this recording will be available on uh, our YouTube channel later. Uh, we'll also post uh, the the links uh, for the uh, documentation that uh, uh, Abby shared about state persistence and the uh, this issue that we were just talking about about uh, time range uh, uh, pinning. Um, we'll also add those to the forum uh, so folks can reference them there. Cool. Uh, well, without any last minute questions, um, thank you, thank you everyone for for joining. Uh, these will will probably get a little smoother as we as we go forward and do more and learn. Uh, 
thanks again to Abby for uh, uh, sharing all of her uh, hard work on uh, uh, state persistence and, and data persistence. Um, and hopefully I will see you all in the future. Uh, the next version of this meeting will be two weeks from today. <laughs>